Hello everyone, welcome to Miss Wet and Science Revision. In this video we're going to look at how to draw the electronic structure of atoms and also how to write the electronic structure of different atoms. Okay, the first thing we need to know in order to be able to draw the electronic structure, that's how the electrons in an atom are arranged, is we need to know how many electrons an atom has. And we do this using the periodic table. So for the, each symbol of each element, there are two numbers. There's a small number and a big number. The small number is what we call the atomic number. And actually that tells us the number of protons. So that doesn't really help us. But in an atom, because it has no overall charge, we know that the number of protons and the number of electrons are actually the same. So if we look at that small number, we can also cheat and that will tell us the number of electrons as well. So lithium, for example, it has the numbers three and seven next to it. That means it has three protons, so it also has three electrons. So the next question is, we know how many electrons lithium's got, but where do we put them? How are they arranged? So we've got our three electrons and we're going to have to put them in shells. So electrons are always present in shells or orbits and they orbit around the nucleus. So they're moving around the nucleus and we draw this by drawing our circle. So this is our first shell. That's where we're going to put, put some of our electrons. This first shell is a lot smaller because it's right in the centre and it can only hold up to two electrons. So we can put up to two electrons in the centre, which we'll do. Now, we've still got one left because lithium's got three electrons and we've only done two so far. So we need to draw another shell and then we just put the last electron in the second shell. Now, that second shell or any of the other shells after the first one can all hold up to eight electrons. So the first shell is smaller and can only hold two, but then every shell after that can hold up to eight. So we just put that one last electron in the next shell. We also need to be able to write the electronic structure and if we were to describe this, we'd say there are two electrons in the centre and there's one on the next shell. So we would write the electronic structure as 2, 1. We're basically just describing, using numbers, how the electrons are arranged rather than describing it by drawing it. So for our worked example, we'll have a look at a carbon atom. So if we look at the periodic table, carbon has an atomic number of 6, which means it has 6 protons. And it, that also means it has 6 electrons because they've got to be the same. We know that the first shell can hold up to two electrons. So we can draw our very first shell and put two electrons in it. So we've put two down already. We know it's got six electrons, so we're going to need another shell. Now that second shell can hold up to eight, but we've not got eight to put in there. We've only got six electrons in total. We've already put down two, so we just need another four. How would we write that structure? Well, we would say, well, there's two electrons in the middle shell and then four in the next shell. So all we write is two, four. That is the written electronic structure for carbon. And here is our last worked example. We're gonna look at sodium. So sodium, the periodic table will tell us, has 11 electrons because it has 11 protons. So we need to decide where to put them. So we can draw our first shell, which can hold up to two electrons. Doesn't matter what atom it is, that first shell can only ever hold up to two electrons. We're going to need a second shell because we've got more left. We need to put 11. This second shell can hold up to eight. So we're going to fill that shell up and put another eight in that next shell. So we've got two in the center and then eight in the next shell. That means we've done 10 altogether, but we've got 11. So we've still got another electron left to put down. So we're going to have to draw a third shell and that one again could hold up to eight, but we've actually only got one left because we've already done 10 and sodium has 11. So we put one electron in the outer shell. That makes sense because sodium's in group one, so it must have one in its outer shell. And to write the electronic structure of this, we will have two in the center, then eight in the middle shell, and then one in the outside shell. So the written structure is two, eight, one. Here are some practice questions to have a go at. For each one, you need to draw the electronic structure of the atom and then also write it as well. So draw and write the electronic structure of an oxygen atom. Here's the symbol for oxygen. Our second one is going to be a fluorine atom. And here is the symbol for fluorine. And then these I've just condensed into one question, but it's exactly the same. For each of these, you need to draw the atom, draw the electronic structure, and then write the electronic structure. We've got aluminium, magnesium, 
nitrogen and potassium. Remember that the small number tells you how many electrons there are. Pause the video and have a go. Okay, oxygen we can see has got eight electrons. We can put two in the centre shell and then we're going to have another six left because it's got eight in total. So we're going to have to put another six electrons in the second shell. Well, we can describe that as two, six, because there's two in the centre and then six in the next shell. So first we've drawn the electronic structure and then we've written it. Fluorine has nine. So same as always, we have two in the centre and then we have seven left to put down and they all go in the next shell and that makes a total of nine. In this case, the written structure will be two, seven. Aluminium has 13 electrons, so we have two in the centre, and then if we do eight on the next shell, because we can hold up to eight on the next shell, but that makes ten, and we've still got three left. So in our third shell, we're going to put down a final three, and we would write this structure as two, eight, three. That makes sense, because aluminium is in group three, so you would expect it to end in a three. Magnesium's got 12 electrons, so we start by putting two in the centre, eight in the next shell, that makes ten, and then we're going to have two left over, so we draw a final third shell and put two in the outside shell. We'd write that as two, eight, two, and that makes sense because magnesium's in group two. Nitrogen has seven electrons, as always, two in the centre, and then to make up to seven, we're going to have five left, so we put those five in the next shell, and we would write this as 2, 5. And finally, potassium, which is the biggest one we're going to do today. We've got 19 electrons, so as always, 2 go in the centre. Then we have another 8 in the second shell, that makes 10. We can have another 8 in the next shell, that makes 18. We've still got one left, so we do our final shell with just one in. Again, it makes sense because potassium's in group 1 and we would write that as 2881. The highest you'll be expected to go is calcium, which has just got one more electron than that potassium atom. Okay, thank you for watching, guys. I hope this has been useful for you, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.